We're saying that one of the main things that confuse people uh, when, when you begin to think about WordPress and development themes is the different content types. By default, you get posts, pages, and links. Links are actually one of the content types of WordPress. And the thing is that anything I'm going to say about WordPress, you can customize it. That's the power of it. So by default, you get three content types. You can build whatever content type you want to. Okay. Uh, the main thing about posts is that they are meant to be used in a chronological order, so like a blog, because WordPress was born as a blog. The main thing about pages is that you're supposed to use them only to set up content that, that's going to sit on the website for longer times, like the about us page or any. When, whenever you build a corporate website, uh, most of the things you need can be solved using pages. And uh, in the case of links, they're actually just a collection of a title and a URL. That's, a, that's the simplest content type you can get. But there's another big difference here, uh, and, that, and that's with posts and with links, you can actually categorize them, right? So you can say this post belongs to this ITP class over here, and this one is personal, and this is whatever. So. Can I just ask you a really quick question yes. before we get into WordPress? Why do we use WordPress? <clears throat> It's easier for the developer to code it from scratch in HTML, yeah. CSS, or PHP, or right. Ruby, or whatever. Yeah. But for the client itself, who doesn't know any programming, it's easier to use a content management system. Yeah. Yes, that's it. And and also using using WordPress, you get many other things for free. Hi. Hi. Welcome. I'm so late. I'm sorry. We're all late. That's okay. Okay. So with using WordPress, you get so many other things for free. For instance, uh, if you want to build a, an RSS feed for your website, WordPress has it built in. So whatever you do in WordPress, it actually outputs your page, your web page, and your RSS. So you can have people subscribe to your feed and get automatic updates. Uh, there's this thing called trackbacks. So for instance, if I want to do some, if I if I want to uh, make a comment about your website in mine. If I type uh, any content in my website and put a link to your website, your website is going to be notified that I'm going. To, I'm, I'm linking to you. So that's a good thing because search engines actually weight how much important your your website is by looking at the trackbacks and, and things like that. So there there are many small things that yeah. go into WordPress. Uh, besides making it easy for people to actually build something without ever touching a code of a line of code, right? So I was talking about the the way you can actually categorize content in WordPress, and you can categorize by default. You can categorize posts and links. You cannot do that with pages. And again, the categories that you can build in WordPress by default are two systems. They are separate and different. They can the actual category system and the tag system, they're both uh, taxonomies. So they're both ways to organize your content. And you can build your own ways of organizing content. So uh, in, in this case, in, in this example, I'm using this sales uh, website. And everything I put in here is on the default category called sales. I should add this to, to make it more English friendly. So I'm going to do it right away. Sales, sales. And this will mess up my code, but that's OK. Uh, but then I, I created a second category called blog. And the good thing about categories is that you use them to separate what content is displayed on whatever page. Okay? So for instance, again, in this website, I'm, I have set it up that in, in the home page of the website, I only show content that is categorized as sales. But if I want to see the blog, that's a different category. So whenever I click that, you see up here, category, blog. I only get that specific category. If I were to type here, sales, uh, no, ventas, 
Okay, I haven't built a template to, to support this on this website, but all of the content that we saw here was on, oh, yeah, I messed up changing the name, I'm gonna change it back. All of the content is, is displayed by this specific uh, condition, and that is that it belongs to some category, okay? So, um, that's the content, that's, that's the general things about the content type and the taxonomies. Mm -hmm. So you can actually build different things. It's like, imagine that every, every single thing in WordPress is an object. And I'm sorry to bring this processing metaphor here, right? It's, it's, it's an object built out of a class. So there's a class called posts. There's a class called links. There's a class called pages. And each of those class has different attributes. So for instance, a post, by default again, has a title, a content area, an excerpt, that's the small text you see at the beginning. You can make it belong to some category, you can make it own some tags, you can add custom fields, which are custom ways of creating these, these content uh, attributes. So for everything you need to build in WordPress, you first have to think what are the elements of this content type that I want to have. Mm -hmm. So again, if, if you're building a portfolio, you will probably need a little bit more than a title and a content area. You might want to have a, an image gallery. Uh, you might want to have URLs as, as, as part of each portfolio piece. You might want to have yeah, what not, right? Yes. But then when you click on them, it looks terrible. But would this be a plugin if I added an image gallery in there? Image galleries are built in by default in WordPress. Okay. But the way it's, it displays the gallery, it's very crude. It's very raw. So you have to style it a lot. Okay. So for instance, um, if I wanted to create so new new posts. So here we are. I have all of these images already loaded in my website. Mm -hmm. You could create a gallery from within WordPress here. And I'm going to add this and this and this and this. So I'm going to have these four images in this gallery. <coughs> Create a new gallery. And this is my gallery. Okay, so my gallery now has four images. You can reorder them here. You can do whatever you want to them. And then you have some settings to, de to define how the gallery is shown on the page. For instance, whenever I click the image on the gallery, what do I want it to happen? Do, do I want to go to the media file? Do I want to go to the attachment page? So the media file is, is the actual image, but for every image, you will have another new page, so you can actually comment on that specific image or link to that specific thing. And, <coughs> and this is the way it displays by column, so you can have three columns or two or seven, whatever you want. So when I insert the gallery, you see it here, it's, it's shown this way. And if I publish, let's see what happens. And I'm not sure what's gonna happen again because in, in, in the template I'm using, actually in the theme I'm using, I didn't prepare the theme to receive galleries, right? So you have to do both things. You, you have to build the gallery in, in the admin WordPress and you have to prepare your theme to display the gallery. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we, we shall go to that soon. So if I update, here you see, here's our new post but we're not seeing anything here no. because of the way I coded this particular theme. It's yeah, it's, it's not a feature image, but it's something like that. Yeah. But if I go to the actual page, mm -hmm. here's our gallery. And this is all messed up because I, I haven't set up a theme to receive a gallery object, right? So in your case, the first 
thing you might want to do is actually build the gallery. And once you have the gallery, start using CSS to style it a little bit. Uh, and then you will probably find out that the way WordPress generates the gallery is not good enough, and you're going to start using a plugin for that. Right? Remember I said the gallery should link to the media uh, file? So whenever I click the image, I got to the actual image over here. Okay. Um, another thing that I think it's important to know about WordPress is that it's, it's the different ways you, you could extend its functionalities. So you could actually create new content types, you could create new taxonomies, and you can create new functionalities. That's why we use plugins a lot, because they come with this functionality pre-built for us. Uh, let me see what plugins I have on this web website already. Actually, I, I've got only two plugins, and I don't need any of these for this website. Because this one was to recreate thumbnails. Whenever you upload an image to WordPress, WordPress makes a copy of the image in different size. Uh, so I changed that setting, and I wanted to recreate the size of the images. I use this re regenerate thumbnails plugin. I'm not using it anymore. And the WordPress importer is another plugin that let me actually import whatever I did on my local computer to the website when I upload it to the server. So I, I could safely say that for this example, I'm not using any plugins, okay? And I'm gonna show you why. Because one of the ways of extending functionalities is through plugins, and the other way is through a file called functions.php. So I'm gonna move quickly, and, and then come back to your question. I'm gonna move to what are, what's the structure of a WordPress theme, okay? So if I go to uh, sites, this website that we're seeing here, is hosted on my local computer. This, this address here is my local computer. So if you type it, you're, you're not gonna get this, okay? So in my computer, in my sites folder, I actually have this website called here, and my template, I'm sorry, my theme, I have to, I have to get used of making a difference of those words, is called here. And there are different, many times you say, oh, I need to get a WordPress template, and, and the proper name is theme because whenever you Google, template, you're going to get a different part of WordPress, which is very important also. The template is, is, is the abstract way that WordPress organizes things within your theme, okay? So for instance, my theme is very simple. I have only a few files here. Uh, and this one, for instance, is a template for a specific page. That's, that's the difference. So. What do you need to have a WordPress theme? There always has to be an index file. This is the first file that's gonna get called whenever you, you, you use your, your theme on, on the website. But the thing about this file, and I'm gonna open Coda. Coda is, is a code editor. You can use Coda, Text Wrangler, Sublime, uh, Text Editor, Dreamweaver, whatever you want. So, um, let me see if it's open already. Oh, here it is. So I just opened the index file. I'm gonna stop the screen recording and open it again because it's 